Here we find in our text that Jacob is about to get a blessing from his father that he does not deserve. Um, Isaac is about to hand out an eternal blessing. This blessing is of such magnitude that this blessing not only passed from God to Abraham, but from Abraham down to Isaac. Now it's going to go from Isaac to Jacob, and then from Jacob to the twelve tribes. This, this blessing we're going to look at here in just a minute, it's that great Abrahamic blessing of I'll bless them that bless you, and I'll curse him that curses you. Uh, and may I just say this, the blessing is still in effect even today. Uh, you, you're not looking at an anti-Semite this evening, brother. I still believe God got big plans for the nation of Israel. Uh, and I still believe God blesses people that bless them, and I still believe God curses nations that curse them tonight. I realize they're enemies for the gospel's sake, but they're beloved for the Father's sake tonight. And uh, God's still going to do something with them, friend. And we'll pick the narrative up. We don't got time to read all of it. You know what's going to happen here. Uh, Jacob sends, or Isaac sends Esau out to go hunt for some venison. Esau's the oldest. He's going to get the blessing. And while he's out hunting for it, Rebekah, uh, the wife of Isaac, the mother of Jacob, she's going to help deceive her blind husband and Jacob's blind daddy into giving Jacob the blessing that is meant for Esau. Now we break into the story in verse number 18 of Genesis 27 and it said he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am I who art thou my son and Jacob said unto his father uh, I'm Esau thy firstborn I have done according as thou badest me arise I pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me and Isaac said unto his son, uh, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near that I may, uh, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I'll eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, plenty of corn and wine. Verse 29, here comes the blessing. Let people serve thee, nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Here's that great blessing. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. Here in our text we find that the Father is about to give out this eternal but yet nationalistic blessing to one of his sons. It ends up going to the son that he was not expecting. Uh, may I say it caught Isaac off guard, but it didn't catch God off guard. It was a bigger plan going on here than Isaac even knew about tonight. And Jacob's going to get this blessing, but let me say some things about Jacob getting this blessing on the way into the message. Uh, Jacob wants the blessing, but he can't get it. Y'all realize that if you go back and look in the beginning part of chapter 27, uh, he'd like to have it. He wants it. He has a desire unto it, but he tells his mama, I, I can't have it. I I'm not Esau. Esau's a hairy man. I'm a smooth man. Uh, we don't sound alike. We don't look alike. If I go in yonder, I'm going to be perceived as the deceiver that I am tonight. Here we find by way of introduction, Jacob has no ability 
to get this blessing. You don't have the ability. It, it, no matter how hard Jacob tries, he can't get it. It doesn't matter if Jacob outloves Esau. It don't matter if Jacob outworks Esau. It doesn't matter what Jacob does. He cannot have this blessing. You say, preacher, how come he can't have it? Simple. He ain't Esau. <laughs> That's real deep right there, ain't it? Brother Foster, he can't get it. He has absolutely no ability for the Father to give him this eternal blessing. Got absolutely no ability to get it whatsoever. Doesn't matter how many years he spends hoping, thinking, praying, wanting, it ain't going to happen. It's not his. He has no ability. And then let me say this. Not only does he have no ability, he has an awareness that he does not deserve this blessing. He's aware of this fact. Back up in verse number 11, it said this, Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man. I'm a smooth man. Verse 12, My father, peradventure, will feel me. I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. He even says, Mama, I have an awareness of this fact, that Esau deserves it, and I do not. That Esau should get it, and I should not. And mama, I want a blessing, but you're going to send me in there to end up getting a curse. Daddy going to slap me on the back of my head and run me out of that tent and make me look like the idiot that I am. Not only does he have no ability to get this blessing, but he has an awareness that he does not deserve this blessing. But y'all realize, by the end of the story, he gains acceptance into the blessing. He does get it. <laughs> When it's all said and done, here we sit tonight and we read from here forward and we end up reading about the 12 tribes of the children of Jacob, the children of Israel. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. When we talk about Israel, that's this guy. When we talk about the 12 tribes, that come from this guy tonight. He ends up, even though he has no ability, he has an awareness about it, he gains acceptance. You say, preacher, how in the world, in spite of the fact that he has no ability to get this blessing, how does he wind up with this eternal blessing from the Father? Listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. He gets it the only way that he could. He has to assume the person of somebody else. He cannot get it on his own. He ain't good enough. He ain't great enough. He's not born with the birthright to get it tonight. The only way to get this blessing, the only way, is the Father. <laughs> the Father would have to see Him as being somebody that He is not. The Father would have to delegate it to Him based y'all listen <laughs> based not on Jacob's merit but based off of somebody else's merit you say who is the merit it's the elder brother it's not Jacob that deserves it somebody else deserves it it's not Jacob that's earned it somebody else has earned it it's not Jacob that's accepted somebody else is accepted but Jacob comes in and assumes the role of the one that is accepted in the father's eyes and when he does he gains this great eternal blessing of the ages tonight say preacher that's a real good little story. But what in the world does that have to do with us in 2020 sitting here at Emmanuel Baptist Church uh, on a Monday night? Well, I remember there was a day when the preacher got to preaching uh, about God was going to give out a blessing uh, of salvation by grace through faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what that preacher told me? He told me I was sorry and low down and rotten and I wasn't no good and I was a sinner lost without God and I, brother, I remember the night when I gained an awareness that I had no ability to earn the blessing of my heavenly Father. I had no ability to gain acceptance in the family of the Lord. But thank God on a cold January night in Pembroke, Georgia, I walked out the building and I was in the family. I got the blessing. I had no ability to get it. I had a 
definite awareness I could not get it but you are looking at a little white boy that has been accepted into the beloved tonight you say how are you in how'd you get in because I didn't come by myself I didn't come and tout Cody's horn but I came on the marriage I came in the blessing I came in the power and I came in the ability of the only begotten of the Father who's full of grace and truth. I got the blessing because I came through the elder brother, the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. And I want to preach on this thought just for a few minutes and show you some truths out of this text. I'm preaching on blessed because of another. Blessed because of another. Y'all listen to me tonight. Every single blessing you got is not because of you. That preacher right there hit the nail on the head, stomping all around my message and didn't even know it tonight. Y'all, every good thing I've got, it ain't because of Cody's horn. Every good blessing I've got in God tonight is all because of the bleeding night lamb of Calvary. It's all because of the suffering Son of God. It's all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not because of me, but it's all because of Jesus this evening. I want to show you how he got blessed because of another. Here he ends up in front of Isaac. And Jacob gets accepted and blessed by the Father. How in the world, Brother Foster, does the Father bless this boy Jacob? Let me say, number one, he got blessed because he came in the title of someone else. He came in the title or with the title of someone else. Do y'all realize when Jacob comes to the Father, he doesn't come in his own name? You won't find nowhere in this text when he shows up to get this great national eternal blessing. He don't pop in and say, Hey, Daddy, it's Jake. Bless me. No. His name won't do him no good with the Father. You say, Why? He's a messed up son. You know what his name is? It's Jacob. Deceiver. Supplanter. Trickster. Conniver. Boy, that sounds like us, don't it? Hey, hey, hey. The name Cody Zorn, you know what that sounds like when the name Cody Zorn is mentioned as far as salvation goes? You know what the name Cody Zorn sounds like? In the ears of God the Father, I'm talking about Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord. You know what my name sounds like? Deceiver. Supplanter. Shotster. You get nothing. Why? Because I was born in the wrong family. Born in Adam's family. Bad birthright. Wrong family. Cursed seed. I get nothing. And son of Jacob comes in and says, Hey, my name's Jacob. I need a blessing. Daddy's going to say, Get yourself out of here. I got nothing for you. It's for Esau. But when Jacob comes in and he says that name when Jacob comes in and he lifts up somebody else's name daddy's ears perked up son there's a name that the father Isaac loves to hear now I don't know how much study I'm sure you have I know this church is a Bible believe I like that sign right there that kind of lets me know we're in a Bible believing Bible teaching Bible preaching Baptist church I like that and I know you done study and you figured this out favoritism runs deep in this family oh yeah Abraham's favorite was Isaac Isaac's favorite is Esau Rebecca's favorite was Jacob and man you come on down to Jacob's family and there's just so many schisms and splinters and favorites in that family it's just more than you could possibly imagine his favoritism runs deep and Rebecca's favorite is Jacob but that ain't the father's favorite 
the father's favorites Esau. Oh, he sits out on the front porch and he says, There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's worth it. Sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. And Isaac says, Oh, how I love Esau. <laughs> I mean, he crazy about Esau. I mean, he says, my soul loves your venison. My soul loves your cooking. Oh, I want nothing more than to bless you because I love you. And when Jacob walks in and he says, Father, watch what he said. It's in the text. Look at the first thing he says, verse 18. He came unto his father and said, My father, the father said, Here am I, but who are you? Who art thou, my son? This is going to determine if he gets anything or not. Right here when he says, Who art thou? If Jacob says, I'm Jacob. Game over. Game over. You get nothing. But he don't say that. Verse 19, Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. And when Isaac hears that name, it does the trick. When Isaac hears that name that he loves and values above every other name, he says, come on in. Come on in. You get acceptance. Come on, sit down right here with me. You just come on in and fellowship because that's the name I love. May I say tonight, the only thing that gets me acceptance into the throne room of God, the only reason why I gained acceptance in the family of God, it sure wasn't on the name Cody Adams Zorn but when I come before the Father and I say that name that name above every name that name that makes all of hell tremble that name that makes all of heaven cheer that name that neither is there salvation in any other for there's none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved that name that God hath highly exalted and given a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus 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 every knee should bow and every tongue should confess of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father thank God for that blessed name Jesus tonight hey y'all you can stand on the 50 yard line of a pro ball game of an NCAA game you can stand on the 50 yard line of a high school game and lead in prayer and as long as you say in God's name we pray nobody give you any flack this world doesn't mind God's name you can pray in his name nobody say nothing you can say in Mohammed's name or Allah's name. Nobody say nothing. But son, hell gets all stirred up. I'm talking about the devil and all the imps of hell get mighty stirred up when you espouse that name of... Hey, let me time out. I don't know about y'all tonight. I was raised in southeast Georgia. I was raised in the country. And brother, when we got ready to worship, we didn't worship in Yahweh's name. All this new modern liberal left wing stuff, brother, in these churches, it's, it's Yahweh and Yahweh. And Yah brother, that don't make nobody nervous. You say, well, you ought to study the original participles in the Greek and maybe you would come up with the deep doctrinal truth. May I say I'm English? I preach to English-speaking people. I got an English Bible. And Yahweh, it's Jesus. You say, well, preacher, when you say that name and that word, that makes me a little bit nervous. What? Jesus? 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 Sweetest name I know fills my every longing in my heart. Keeps me singing as I go. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. It's 
it's Jesus, Jesus. And there will come that great day when every knee shall bow and say, Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. I got, I got acceptance. I got blessed because of the title of somebody else. I came to God and I was titled. I, I threw out that name. I did some name dropping on God. Name dropping don't work with God less than you use one name. Just one. Drop Mary's name and God going to slap you on the back of the head and run you out the tent. Go on, go on ahead and try and get to God by saying, in the name of the mother of God, Mary. Oh, <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with thee. Blessed art thou among women and the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. My head hurts and my belly hurts and where my cigarettes at? I mean, brother, you, you get, you get nothing in the name of Mary. You get nothing in the name of a priest or a pope or a pastor or a preacher. You get nothing in the name of Buddha or Allah or Mohammed. But brother, you can unlock the whole shebang. You can unlock the whole storehouse of the blessings of God by coming in that name of Jesus this evening. Oh, it's that name. Say, preacher, I want to get saved. There ain't no salvation any other. There's none other name. None other name. Under heaven given among men whereby we must. We must be saved. You want to go to heaven? You better start calling on the name of Jesus. You ain't getting in no other way, friend. I'm glad I got blessed because of the title of someone else. I, I'll never forget as long as I live. We uh, preacher years ago. My dad's been a pilot since... Lord, since before I was born, he passed that level of aviation down to me, and and uh, our, our sport that we like to do is competition aerobatics and, and flying these little airplanes and doing upside down the rolls and all that. And years ago, my dad happened to have a two seat aerobatic plane, and he gave a ride, just 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 by happenstance, gave a ride and some instruction to the captain of a Trident naval submarine. You say, preacher, what's the difference in a Trident naval submarine and any other kind of submarine? This is the sub that's got the nuclear warheads on board. When they go out yonder and get in the ocean, he's king on board that ship. And brother, if the president turns the key, pushes the button, and drops the codes, whatever they are, it's his job to tell them and shoot them missiles off out there at sea. My dad got a VIP ride. This is years ago. They stopped doing these now. But my dad got a VIP ride for two days on board that vessel. They do a two-day shakedown before they go out for those long excursions. Daddy got to ride on it. Well, when they came back into port, Daddy called the whole family to come down to Brunswick down there where the naval base is, St. Mary's, Georgia, down there, and get him. Well, when they did, the captain said, Look, I'll let your family stay at my house while we're gone. And then when they come to get you, I'll let them on the base, give them a tour of the submarine themselves. And then y'all go on back home. So I'll never forget as long as I live. We pulled up there to the front of this big naval operation. These big military police were met us, brother, at the little guard shack and M16s and locked and loaded in the whole night. Brother, we had no hope. Brother, we could have got out of that car and said, hey, 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 hey. My name's Cody Zorn. Open this joint up. I want to go look at one of your subs. Hmm. Yeah, you know what that'd get me? <laughs> I, I got arrested. They said, y'all, y'all, some sort of Taliban, Al Qaeda operative. They locked us up. But we got to the front and they said, Can we help you, ma'am? And I remember my mama looked at him and said, Yes, we are guests of Captain Ron Deering. And son, when she said that, they snapped too. They walked over, grabbed the phone, picked it up, made a phone call, come back and said, uh, you need to go down this way. I mean, they started treating us like the VIPs. 
They said, you need to go down here and then make a turn here and told us where to go to get to where they was. We got on that base, drove down there and got to where they was, and we got hooked up with Captain Ron Deering. And there was my daddy too. And he started walking us around that base. And son, we got to walk around that base. I mean, swabbies everywhere were stopping and doing this number. We was walking right behind him, and they were stopping and doing this number. And I thought, that's right. That's right. Uncle Ron up there. Uncle Ron showing us around here. Keep on snapping too, boys. Y'all doing a good job. Walked us off on that submarine, brother. People snapping too and saluting everywhere. I mean, they just let us go on it. We're there with Captain Ron. Walked right on it. He, I remember walking up to the silos in that submarine where the warheads are at. Seen the silos, touched it with my hand. Inside of that's enough power to blow up nations. Nations. I mean, brother, that thing right there, they said one shot at submarine is the equivalent of, of, of a superpower of a nation floating at sea as it relates to how much nuclear power they got. Massive power. And all of his fingertips, and I'm walking all around the whole blessed place. He walked us in the kitchen, got us cookies and drinks. We sat there and talked to him. and Then we got out and went home. And the other day, I was thinking about that whole thing, and I thought I'd have never, I would have never got a chance to see none of that had it not been for somebody with a title. It took somebody with a title to come out where I was, grab a hold of me, and walk me in and say, they are with me. And brother, all that good stuff in that book, ain't no way I could have ever got none of it. There's no way I could have enjoyed any of it. But thank God the Son of the Father walked out where I was, grab my hand, and walk me right smack dab into the good things of God. You blessed because of another. He got blessed because he came in the title of someone else. Can I say secondly, he got blessed because he came in the threads of someone else. So what do you mean the threads, preacher? Well, some of you young people might not understand threads. That's what these old geezers used to call clothes. The old folk know what I'm talking about. They say, I got my threads on. He didn't come in his own threads. He came in somebody else's threads. Do you realize when he came, he didn't, even get, he didn't get accepted to the Father, not only because of his own title, but he wasn't even wearing his own clothes. Look what your Bible said. Watch verse number 15. Verse 15 said this. Rebecca took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, put them upon Jacob, her younger son. Watch it, verse 16. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. If he's going to get acceptance, not only can he not have the wrong title, he can't have the wrong threads either. As a matter of fact, when he gets in there, I got to hurry, I got to hurry here. Let me just run down here and show you this. When he gets in there, watch what the father does. Right after he asked him his name, then he wants to feel him. Verse 21. Verse 21, Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. I mean, he comes in before the Father, and I told you he's that smooth man. If he comes in without them clothes and without that hair, brother, the Father's going to say, you don't feel nothing like Get out! Get out! You see, I, I, they, some people may invoke the title, but they ain't got the threads. Hey, all kind of religion in the world is talking about Jesus, but they still trying to get to heaven by getting baptized. And they're still trying to get to heaven by taking the sacraments, transubstantiation, adding a little extra in, evidence of the Holy Ghost, fall out, talk in tongues, let your frock fly over your head in the whole nine yards. But if you're going to get some acceptance with the Father, you can't just have the Son's title, you got to have His threads. So how do you get them? Somebody else puts them on you. He didn't put them on, she put them on him. 
<laughs> She's the one put the threads on him. And brother, when he walks in, he says, she, he says, oh, I know that feel. That's my boy. Oh, I know the feel that. And he don't just feel him. Y'all, he don't just feel him. It said he, I'm glad you took a shower tonight. Because you were just happened to be here for me to smell on. <laughs> oh, he don't just feel right. He smells right too. Can I tell y'all, when I came to God and got born again, you know the only reason why I'm in the family tonight? Because I got robed in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what the Bible said about Israel in Romans chapter number 10, I believe it is? It said, but they going about to establish their own righteousness. Time out. You know what that is? That's over in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve messed up in the Garden of Eden and when they messed up and knew they was naked, they went about to sowing fig leaves together and they sewed it up and then they come walking before God and said, look God, like our like our new clothes ain't these nice these wasn't donated by somebody's dead relative or nothing was it oh man ain't nobody mad right off the bat in the meeting don't you like our clothes and God said no I don't like your clothes they're awful but we worked so hard on them God I don't care, could care less how hard you worked on them but God, see, we just feel like, couldn't care less how you feel. But God, that, that fellow down the way at this church told us if we'd just sew enough of these together, you'd say it was okay. I don't care what that preacher told you. Ain't good enough. Don't want it! So you say, what did God want, preacher? The first killer in the Bible wasn't Cain. First person that ever killed something in the Bible was God. God went out and the Bible said he got coats of skin. Say it don't say he killed nothing. How you reckon he got coats of skin? God was the first one to ever slay a lamb. God went out there and he found two lambs in the flock and God took them lambs, skinned them down and brought them two coats to Adam and Eve and said, here, yeah, this is the only thing I'll accept to cover up your shame. The only thing I'll accept to cover up your nakedness is the skins that I have provided for you. May I say the only thing God will accept for righteousness is His own Son's righteousness. It's not what I've provided Provided in my hand no price I bring simply to the cross I cling it's not what I've done it's what he did for me and do you know because I've got his clothes on I smell good to God would you do me a favor y'all said y'all like Bible right there so let me give you some Bible. Hold your place in Genesis 27. Come all the way to the New Testament, to the book of Ephesians. I want you to look at two verses, one in Ephesians and one in 2 Corinthians. Look at what your Bible said here in the book of Ephesians and chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 2. Watch it, watch it. Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, watch it, for a sweet-smelling savor. Y'all, yeah. when Jesus died on the cross, God looked over the balconies of heaven and said, that smells mighty good. Mm -hmm. That's a sweeter smell than any sacrifice that was ever offered in the Old Testament tabernacle or in Solomon's temple. That's a, that's a smell that I don't never need another one. It's good. And I don't want you all to watch what it said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Watch what the Bible says about us. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 15. Don't miss this. 2 Corinthians 2, 15. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. Not only did Jesus smell good, but because I came in his title and I got his threads on, now when God smells me, he says, you smell just like my boy. 
That's what it said. I'm a sweet savor of Christ unto God. When God sniffs me, he don't smell me. He smells Jesus. They say, oh, they say over in they say over in Europe, they do a lot of shepherding and things of that nature. And they say at certain times of the year, those mothers give birth to those baby lambs. Said many times when they give birth to these lambs, the mothers will die in the birthing process and leave leave orphan lambs. And sometimes the lambs will die and leave a mother with a dead lamb. So they come up with this idea what we'll do so the orphans don't die is we'll take orphan lambs and put it into the family of a mother that lost a lamb. Sounds like a reasonable idea to me. Brother Foster, they take these little orphan lambs and they stick them in the family of the mother that lost a lamb. But the problem with that is they say when that little orphan lamb walks into the family and going to get milk from this mother, that mother will lean down and she will smell the smell. And when she sees it is the smell of a stranger and not her own blood, she violently runs it away and it cannot get in the family and she'll make it stay outside of her family and it'll, it'll die out there without some extra help. So they say this is the way that they keep the orphans alive. They take the stillborn lamb and they skin the coat off the back of that lamb. And they take that steel dripping with blood red coat and they tie it on the back of the orphan lamb and then push it back into the family. And now when that little shaking, trembling, scared orphan lamb comes back into that family, the mother leans down again and says... And it is no longer the smell of the stranger. It's no longer the smell of the outcast. It's no longer the smell of somebody else's baby. It's the smell of her own. And she accepts it in the family as her own baby. May I say the night I got saved when God imputed to me the righteousness of Jesus Christ purely by faith, purely by repenting of my sins. He now smells me and says, you smell mighty good to me. You smell like my boy. <laughs> Looking down through the ages, God beheld a dying soul. Sin had brought separation, and nevermore could man behold. There must come a lamb one whose blood alone redeems, bringing gifts to the Father of our souls made white and clean. So Jesus left His home in glory. He traveled on to the cross just to bridge the gulf to glory and to rescue all the lost. By His blood He entered into the throne room of our God and on the mercy seat He placed it. Salvation for us all. And when God sees me, He sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God he is worthy and He washed me this I know. I'm blessed because of another. I'm blessed because I came in the title of another. The threads of another. I, I, I got a couple other points before my last one. They don't amount up to much, so I'll just throw them out and we'll move on. He came in the tribulation of another. <laughs> look, look what his mama says. Just let's break in verse 13 for sake of time. He came in the tribulation of another. Watch verse 13. His mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, go fetch me them. Do you see that he don't even have to take the blame for his wrongdoing? 
his curse falls on somebody else. Somebody else says, I'll take your curse so you don't have to. I read about that somewhere. I read where the Bible said in Galatians chapter 3 verse number 13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it's written cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree you know what the very next verse says I love this you couldn't make this up if you tried the very next verse says that the blessing might come on all them that believe by faith he took the curse I got the blessing I mean brother that's like the old song said I got the gold mine and he got the shack brother he didn't get much when he got me but I got a whole lot when I got him this evening friend I mean I got it all he took my curse for me paid it all and there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus I, I, I ain't bear nothing no more he bore it all for me you say preacher I sure hope I'm not going to hell when I die well you're looking at a preacher that knows he ain't going to hell when he dies so preacher how can you say such a thing how do you know you ain't going to hell because <laughs> Jesus already took mine for me he became my curse for me this evening. My curse, my curse. He became my curse on the tree. He hung there. In Psalm 22, a prophecy of Jesus said this, I am a worm and no man. You know what the Bible says about sinners that go to hell? Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye'll do. Christ, that Bible said, as Moses lifted up the serpent. I know who the serpent is. Genesis 3, that's a devil. As Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He took what I was supposed to be on the cross. He took, he took what I was supposed to be. Took all my curse for me hung there and said I first I know what sinners say in hell I read it in Luke 16 they say I just want a drop of water I'm thirsty he took all that for me wasn't doing it for himself he was doing it for me he was already accepted in the blood you know what happened on Calvary God treated Jesus like me on Calvary so he could treat me like Jesus I mean, God dumped unsheeted hell, literally, on Jesus on Calvary so that he could dump on me what Jesus should have got. <laughs> Son, this thing's like a piece of fat. The more you chew on it, the bigger it's going to get. We on the little end of something big, y'all. Blessed because of another. He came the tribulation of another. Came in the title of another. Came in the threads of another. He came with the toil and the tokens of another. He didn't even bring his own fruit. He got his own fruit from somebody else. I'm done with this, so I'm, I've told you I'm just throwing out. Lastly, he walked away with the triumph of another. When he walks out, he's got the triumph of another. Watch this. This is the end. But watch what it said, verse 28 and verse 29. Look at what he gets. Verse 28, Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven, fatness of the earth, plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Here's that great eternal blessing. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee. Blessed be he that blesseth thee. Now I told y'all at the beginning, and I've come full circle all the way back around to right here. That right there is an eternal blessing that Jacob did not earn don't miss this <laughs> Jacob did not earn and Jacob could not lose you say preacher how do you know he couldn't lose it cause Jacob messes up a lot more after this man y'all read Jacob's life after this that old sorry conniving dog connives a whole lot after this have y'all read about Jacob's descendants them Jews well they done a whole lot of rank stuff after this but you know what God says about them 
get on over there in the book of Numbers, I reckon it is, yeah. And old Balak calls Balaam to curse him. And old Balaam gets up there on a high place and he's looking down and Balak said, all right, there they all are. There's Jacob's kids. Curse them. Curse them. And this is what Balaam says. How can I curse whom God's blessed? The, the shout of a king. This is what he said. Read it. The shout of a king is with him. Curse me he that curses him. And bless me he that blesses him. And you know what else he says? This is what Balaam says. Per God. He says, God hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. What? God, if you'd like to behold some iniquity in Jacob, I can point them out to you. They in there. But when God looked at him, he said... I don't see no iniquity in him. I don't see nothing wrong with him. He's got the blessing. And y'all know it's such an eternal blessing that we get to Matthew chapter 25. And when you get to Matthew 25, Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent. Not the rapture. I'm talking about, brother, seven years after the rapture. He comes back, King of kings, Lord of lords, to set up a rule and reign on planet earth for a thousand years. And the first thing he does when he sets his rule and reign up for a thousand years is he gathers all them nations that come through the tribulation and he divides sheep from goats. And do you know what the sole qualification is for a sheep or a goat nation? How'd you treat them Jews? That's solely what it is. Read it for yourself. Ain't got nothing to do with the cross or the resurrection or nothing. You know what that whole thing got to do? Jesus says, uh, I was sick and in prison. You visited me. I, I, I was hungry. You fed me. I was naked. You clothed me. I was thirsty. Give me something to drink. Lord, when did we ever see you like this? If you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, the Jews, who was getting persecuted in the tribulation, you've done it to me. Enter thou in the joy of our Lord. And all you nations over here that turned to men while they was on the run, and all you nations over here that wouldn't visit them when they was in prison, and the Antichrist was a persecuting them, and you wouldn't put clothes on them, you wouldn't. All right, all y'all gone, and you gone forever. You say, what's that about? It's Genesis twenty-seven. God blessed them, and it lasts through eternity. Say, what's that got to do with the whole message you're preaching about? I'm glad you asked. That blessing I got, the not I got saved. That blessing I got, it was an eternal blessing. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's the one that's going to go for eternity. And I didn't do nothing to earn it. And I can't do nothing to lose it tonight. I should have lost that blessing of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. I should have lost it a thousand times since I've been saved. Should have lost it a bunch of times. He ought to took it back from me. <laughs> but I still got it. And I can't lose it. You say, why? Because it wasn't based on me. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to God's mercy, He saved us. It's, it was not based on me, just like Jacob's. It was based on somebody else. And tonight, brothers, can y'all come help me up here? Give us a song. You don't whatever God lay on your heart. I'm just telling you tonight, we all sitting in here enjoying the good, sweet things of God. And we're going to enjoy the sweet things of God tomorrow night and Wednesday night. And after meeting's over, y'all going to keep on enjoying the good, sweet things of God. And you know why you're going to do it? All because you got blessed by another. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always... Thanks for listening.